Welcome to another episode of Jay Lono's Garage. If you've been to this website before, you know I'm a, a huge steam enthusiast. We're here in the steam section of my garage. These are all Stanley steamers. They're all various Doble and white and all steam posters on the wall. This is about uh, 1810, something like this, this picture. There's a steam flying machine and a steam walking machine and a steam riding machine. Here's another great picture over here. This is uh, 1829. Atkins illustration of modern prophecy. Novelties of the year, 1829. People riding a steam carriage. I don't know how accurate it is. Look at the guy holding on to the chimney like that wouldn't be red hot. Someone said to me, that, what's the biggest uh, steam vehicle you have? It would have to be this one here. The 1906 Advance steam uh, traction engine. This thing is huge. Weighs 13 tons. Take a look. These are the machines that uh, more or less built uh, America at the turn of the century. The Advanced Threshing Machine Company, I think they got started about 1881, and they went to about 1911 when they merged. They became really advanced, but Advance was its own company for years and years. This thing is pretty amazing. It, it's a traction engine. It could plow. It could haul. You could put a big belt off of this flywheel here and drive a sawmill, whatever you wanted to do. It's a pr pretty beefy machine. It's single cylinder. Take a look here. Come around here. I'll show you. One big giant piston doing all the work. This particular engine pulled 55,000 pounds on a sled not that long ago. This thing was beautifully uh, rebuilt by a friend of mine, Armin Rawlings is his name. And Armin, thank you so much for doing this. You know, the guys that put their heart and soul into these things. Now, an engine like this would normally run on coal, or uh, wood, or even straw. You just, whatever would build a fire. Now, this has been converted to run on propane. It just makes it easier, it doesn't smoke as much, and it's just easy to deal with because you can turn the fire on and off. If you got big logs in there and they get red hot and your boiler runs low water, uh-oh, you got a lot of problems. With gas, you can just turn it off right away. We keep the propane in here. Other than that, she's exactly as she would have been in, uh, in 1906. As you can see, it takes two men to run it. We'll go over all the controls in a little bit. I'll tell you what, I'm gonna show you some pictures of the, of the engine and uh, of the machine, and I'll tell you the history of it while we're looking at that. As I mentioned, uh, this type of traction engine was built up until about 1916. This engine was ordered from the Advanced Steam Company in 1905 by Mr., I think his name was Berzik Hennepin in uh, Minnesota. And his son had gotten a contract in the U.S. Navy to supply lumber for Navy ships. And at the time, he was clearing like six or 700 acres of timber. And uh, he got another 600 acres or something. So he needed something big that could uh, haul logs. And this is what he chose. The engine stands about nine and a half feet tall. It's 104 inches wide. And it gives either 16 or 20 horsepower at about 325 RPM. As I mentioned, this engine is different from a lot of the uh, advanced engine to see. The engine is set back from the steam dome. Most traction engines keep the engine close to the dome. This one keeps the weight in balance and reduces the heat by keeping the main feed line short. You can see the line is very long on this engine. Uh, the reason this engine is set back towards the rear wheels is to add traction to the rear of the engine. More weight on the rear means more traction. Now during World War I, uh, the demand for scrap metal was so high that this engine was actually hidden way out in the woods to prevent scrappers from getting it. And once the war is over, it's put back into service. And then again, during World War II, uh, this type of engine was pretty antiquated, but still worked. It's still cheaper to run it on logs and wood and coal than it was to run it on gasoline, even during uh, World War II. In 1950, it was parked for the last time, and it was pretty far gone. Another guy bought it. I don't know where it went after that. Then my friends, a guy named Sonny Rollins and Ormond Rawlings, those are the two guys that uh, restored this. Ormond really did all the work on it. Uh, he just did a heck of a job. 87 pounds of bearing babbit was poured into the bearing caps. Rubber was put on so it could be ridden on the street so it didn't tear up the roads too badly. Let me show you the work he did on it. Just incredible. Now look how rotted out that boiler was. All that had to be replaced. Look at how chewed up these gears were. All those gears had to be, be remade. You know, guys that do this stuff, 
You don't get rich doing it. It's really a labor of love, and I'm I'm so glad that uh, he was able to save this engine. You need about 250 gallons, 300, 300 gallons of water to get this thing fired up. Then you got another 110 gallons here. There's 55 gallon drums on each side. We fill these with water. Once it gets hot, we'll show you how the injector works to inject to hot water, inject uh, cool water rather into the the boiler. This is your steering here. Not exactly rack and pinion. It takes two men, one to steer it and then one to work the throttle and the clutch. This, this vehicle has no brakes at all. You just put it in reverse and then pull the clutch and get it going the other way. We got air in the compressor now so we can move it, but I don't want you to see it moving on air just yet. It's best on steam. So we'll get it outside. We'll show you how we'll fill it up and uh, we'll take it for a ride. Okay, we got it outside. Now we're gonna put about 250 gallons of water in it. That takes about a half an hour. Then we'll light the fire. Before you fire this thing up, you want to lube it up a little bit. You've got a, a lubricator up here. Check how much oil I got in there. I got plenty of oil. I hand crank this. This puts a little oil on my steam cylinder. Well, we should be ready to go by nightfall. <laughs> Something else is kind of cool. This is steam generated light. Now what you have that fits right on top of here, I'll show you that inside. We have a steam electrical generator. The steam powers the flywheel, spins it, makes electricity and runs that light. Right now we have a motorcycle battery in there, but I'll show you the steam generator. We haven't rebuilt that yet. Uh, this is our steam generator. This goes on top of the boiler. So you take steam in, it spins it, and it ejects the steam and the spinning turns the uh, armature, which creates electricity, which runs the light. So that's basically how that works. We'll clean this up, we'll paint it, we'll restore it, we'll mount it on top of the, uh, the boiler, and we'll use that to uh, generate light for when we go for, <laughs> for night drives in this thing. And over here, this is a little sidecar deal here, little trailer, you fill this with water, and you're out in the field, and you need to pump a little extra water, you can pump water in with this as well. We gotta restore this too, that's the next thing. You got your oilers right here. That's your governor up there. We'll show you what the gates of hell look like. Take a look. Good steam men have no eyebrows. Right here you got your crown sheet. That heats up, you got a piece of, you got a sheet of metal there and you got water on top of it. And it will never get too hot as long as the water is on top of it because the water will conduct the heat away. So you always want to open this valve here and make sure you're getting water out of there so you know you're not burning the crown sheet. If you got no water in there and you got a big fire in here, run away, it's gonna, ex <laughs> it's gonna explode. Up here, this is forward and reverse, that's neutral. This is your throttle. And this is your clutch right up here. Come on up here. See those big wooden blocks in there? There you go. And you move, that's how you move forward. And that's how you stop. Put it in reverse. It takes a lot of work to move this thing. Four miles an hour doesn't sound like fast, but when you go at four miles an hour with this thing, it'll, it'll scare you to death. It's hilarious. I think we're about ready to go for a ride. We've hit all our oiling spots, as you can see. Much like the old steam engines that we have inside, you've got that kind of uh, packing there, that fiber material, you pour oil over that and that lubricates everything. We got our bell, our high pitch whistle, middle whistle, and low whistle. And when people hear that, they get out of the way. We have our steam injector right here. Once you get about 70 pounds in this thing, uh, when your boiler starts to get low, here's your boiler level here. When that gets low, you pull this back. Under pressure, you're injecting fresh water into the boiler from those two tanks right there. Hey, George, ready to go for a spin? All right. Okay, as you can see, it takes two men to run this thing. Let's, uh... Ready to go forward? Yeah.
trip around the block takes about an hour. <laughs> there shouldn't be water coming out of there. Should there? We got a, I think we got a crack in the crown. Now you see those are like a fire tube boiler. The heat goes up through there, through those tubes, and we thought, uh-oh, maybe they'd cracked and water was coming out of the boiler, but it's not. It's just coming off the exhaust, so false alarm. Bernard's going to get inside there while I shut the door to see if there's any leaks. He's, <laughs> he's got a Nomex racing suit. As you can see, our wheel man, George, did a great job steering this thing. As you can see, it steers just by these chains, and if you go too tight, then, uh, well, then you'll bend this, you'll bend these, You'll, you'll bend these bars right here. It's not the most sophisticated thing, but boy, it's been sitting around for 104 years, and I'm sure it'll be around another 104, because it's a real piece of classic Americana. 1906, pretty cool. Well, you know, this is one of those things, you either get it or you don't, and uh, I love steam, and I hope you get a kick out of it, too. Orman, once again, thank you very much. Orman Rawlings, uh, the, the guy who uh, did the initial restoration on this, he did a great job, and, uh, Orman, I'm going to keep checking in with you, see what we're doing wrong. See you next week.